Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to show you the details how an ultra-low noise DC regulated power supply is designed and built. This DC regulated power supply delivers plus and minus 24 volts. It can be easily modified to deliver output voltages from plus and minus 15 volts to 30 volts. It is an ideal power supply for low-level amplifiers, such as phono stage amplifiers and line stage amplifiers. Okay, let us dive into this low noise DC regulated power supply project now. This is the schematic of the DC regulated power supply. The output noise is less than 10 microvolts. This makes it an ideal DC power supply for low level amplifiers when the load current is around 100 milliamp. This power supply can be easily modified to deliver output voltages from plus and minus 15 volts, 24 volts, to 30 volts for various application needs. Two versions of PCB are available. For version A, heatsink is needed. For version B, no heatsink is required and the power transistor is directly mounted on the chassis. You can download free PCB Gerber files in the following website. Both version A and B are available there. The link to the website is given in the video description below. Before we discuss how the ultra low noise DC regulated power supply works, let us take a quick review of some basic DC regulated power supplies. Here is an unregulated power supply that contains only rectifying diodes and filtering capacitors. When no load is connected to it, the outputs are plus and minus 24 volts. For an ideal power supply, the outputs are plus and minus 24 volts and they do not contain any noises and ripples. The first problem of unregulated power supply is ripples appearing in the outputs. The amplitude of the ripple is directly proportional to the load current, but inversely proportional to the capacitance of the filtering capacitors. Therefore, amplitude of the ripple is increased by higher load current, but fortunately reduced by larger filtering capacitance. Another problem of unregulated power supply is that the output voltages change when the AC mains fluctuate. For example, if the AC mains fluctuate from 220 to 240 volts, the outputs change from plus and minus 23 to 25 volts. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet and are enjoying these kinds of videos, then please think about clicking the subscriber button below so I can continue to make these videos for you. Given with these shortcomings, we now look for DC regulated power supplies. The first solution is three terminal regulators. 78 series is for positive power supply and 79 series is for negative power supply. To implement a positive or negative DC regulated power supply, we only need two external components, one capacitor in the input and the second capacitor in the output. They are called fixed voltage three terminal regulators. As you can see, these regulators can only offer some discrete voltages from 5 to 24 volts as shown in the tables. For example, 7815 is a positive 15 volts DC regulator. On the other hand, 7915 is a negative 15 volts DC regulator. If the desired voltages are positive and negative 24 volts, we need to use 7824 and 7924. Let us take a look of the 7824 3 terminal regulator. At 500 milliamp load current, the output noise is 120 microvolts. It is quite high. On the other hand, for the 7924 3 terminal regulator, at 500 milliamp load current, the output noise is 400 microvolts. It is indicated that the output noise is measured when the input capacitor is 2.2 microfarad and output capacitor is 1 microfarad. When large filtering capacitors are used with the sample three terminal regulators I have, the output noise is very high. It is greater than 500 microvolts. Since the noise coming from the fixed 24 volts three terminal DC regulators is high, let us look for a lower noise alternative. They are variable voltage, three terminal DC regulator LM317 for positive voltage and LM337 for negative voltage. 
Resistors R1 and R2 are used for setting the output voltage. These two resistors are now taken out from the integrated circuit of the regulator. When the additional capacitor marked with C adjust is used, you will see in a moment that the adjustable DC regulators produce far lower noise than the fixed voltage regulator. The output voltage is given in the following expression. Since the current flowing into the adjust pin is very small, we can ignore it so that the calculation is simplified. Here shows an example how to calculate the unknown resistors R1 and R2. Since 24 volts is the output voltage we want, the expression is given in equation 1. Assume we allow 3 milliamp flowing into R1 and R2, we have equation 2. Since here we have two equations with two unknowns, solving these two equations gives us the values for R1 and R2. R1 is 390 ohm and 10 kilo ohm variable resistor is used for R2. We build the plus and minus 24 volts DC regulated power supply by using the calculated resistors R1 and R2. The noise level is quite good. At no load condition, the output noise is the lowest, which is 15 microvolts. At 100 milliamp load current, the noise is 50 microvolts. It is much lower than the noise of the fixed voltage regulator power supply. It is 500 microvolts, which is tenfold higher. When we compare the internal structure from circuit analysis point of view, the 78 series and LM317 DC regulators are identical except the placement of resistors R1 and R2. When R1 and R2 are taken out from the integrated circuit, it allows us to place a capacitor at the adjust pin to suppress the noise from the reference center. This is the reason why LM317 produces lower noise than the 78 series regulators. Based upon the structure from a three-terminal DC regulator, we now start with a simplified schematic to design a discrete positive DC voltage regulated power supply with output noise as low as possible. Let us examine every component in this simplified schematic. In order for the regulated power supply to work, the input unregulated DC voltage must be greater than the desired output voltage. The series pass transistor Q1 can be a BJT transistor, as shown in this schematic. Alternatively, Q1 can be a MOSFET transistor. It should be noted that the minimum difference between input and output voltage for BJT and MOSFET is not the same. It is because the gate to source voltage of a MOSFET is several volts higher than the base to emitter voltage of a BJT. The op-amp compares the voltage from the reference center with the sampled voltage from the output. Since the sampled output voltage is set by the potential divider resistors R1 and R2, the output voltage must be determined by R1, R2, and reference center voltage. We will see a moment later how the output voltage is determined. We choose a very low noise reference, LM329. The noise that it produces is just 7 microvolts. It also has a low temperature coefficient. Therefore, the reference voltage remains almost unchanged for a wide range of temperature. The graph shows the temperature characteristic of the reference LM329. When the device is biased for greater than 1 milliamp, the reference voltage 6.9 volts is almost unchanged for temperature rising from 25 to 125 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, the output voltage of a 78 series three terminal regulator will vary by 0.5% for temperature rising from 25 to 125 degrees Celsius. An added advantage of a discrete regulated power supply is that the series pass transistor and the reference LM329 are two discrete components mounted separately on a PCB. Therefore, the reference LM329 does not affect by the series pass transistor, which has a higher temperature. As we know, the unregulated power supply has relatively high ripples. On the other hand, due to the low output impedance from the op amp, the ripples at the base of the series pass transistor become small. Since the ripples at the base of the transistor will pass to the output through the emitter, 
It helps to reduce output noise by adding a filtering capacitor C, as shown in diagram C. A current source is also added to jumpstart the op amp at the instance when the regulated power supply is switched on power. When all these elements are put together, we form the structure of an ultra-low noise DC voltage regulator. And let us take a look of each component. Resistor R, capacitors C and C1, and transistor Q2 form a filter that reduces the ripples at point A. Here is a current source formed by transistor Q3, diodes D1 and D2. The current source generates a few milliamp that helps jump starting the op amp at the instance when the regulated power supply is switched on power. Zener diode D3 creates a DC potential difference to level shift the output of the op amp so that the potential at point C is halfway between the regulated power supply output and the ground. The op amp operates from a single power supply taken directly from the output of the regulated power supply. The op amp compares the voltage from the reference center with the sampled voltage taken from the output. Low noise LM329 will be used for the reference center. Resistors R1 and R2 form a potential divider that samples the output of the power supply. The op amp compares the voltage from the reference center with the sampled voltage from the output. Since the sampled output voltage is set by the potential divider resistors R1 and R2, the output voltage must be determined by R1, R2, and reference center voltage. The expression for the output voltage is given below. In this DC regulated power supply, MOSFET is used for the series pass transistor. The first thing to note is that MOSFET does not have gate current. This reduces the output driving capability from the op amp. Another thing is that MOSFET and BJT produces different sonic characteristic when it is used as the series pass transistor. So far, we have just focused on the positive regulated supply. However, the negative regulated power supply operates with the same working principle. Here we have the complete ultra low noise plus and minus 24 volts DC regulated power supply. In case if you need other output voltages, you can modify the circuit by changing a few components as shown below. Let us take a closer look to the schematic of the positive 24 volts regulated power supply. Now let me highlight to you the key components that help keeping the noise low in this design. Two versions of PCB are available. For version A, heatsink is needed. For version B, no heatsink is required and the power transistor is directly mounted on the chassis. For version B, it is suggested to use 7mm tall hexagonal lock screws so that transistor can be connected to the PCB while it is mounted directly to the chassis. You can download free PCB Gerber files in the following website. Both version A and B are available there. The link to the website is given in the video description below. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, and are enjoying these kinds of videos, then please think about clicking the subscriber button below, so I can continue to make these videos for you. I will see you in the next one.